This next question is really about how has technology really changed uh, PayNet in terms of over the past, let's call it almost 20 years now. Uh, from your start in 2000, you know, we have had a lot of data mining tools now that we didn't have, AI, machine learning. Tell me what's changed and how has technology changed PayNet over the years? It's incredible change, Bob. I mean, it's revolutionary, right? I mean, as you mentioned before, PayNet, uh, one of the original value propositions was replacing the phone call credit reference or the fax credit reference. And of course, we don't do that anymore. But what we have done is been able to put together this uh, massive database into a uh, credit models that can be used for automation and actually used for more predictable and reliable credit scores. In fact, um, the, just the sheer volume of data is a completely different game now. Um, as you know, the, the PayNet database is one example of just terabytes of data that can be harnessed to figure out what is uh, what real credit risk is all about. So you can do more now. We could do a heck of a lot more. And one good example, Bob, is one of our credit models called Master Score version two. It actually is 29 separate models underneath. So it looks like it's really simple on, on the surface, but below it's very complex with these 29 different models. And these things measure things like industry size uh, of business, um, it measures other things like whether it's a, a, a medical practice or a farm. So these uh, businesses all operate differently and the data is substantial enough and the technology can actually process that data quickly uh, to actually provide a more valuable and, and real-time answer. So the technology is completely fundamentally changed and I don't think PayNet could have started had this technology revolution not occurred, both in the internet, obviously, with, with high-speed lines of data to enable the data to flow quickly, but also with the processing power of computers. I mean, today, we can process um, our database on servers, whereas, you know, it used to take mainframes in the old days. So this is a complete game changer, and I think it just really shows that data is going to be the kind of the, the oil and the kind of lubricant that's going to kind of keep business going for a long time now. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Are you, if going a step further with that, do you see anything on the very near horizon, next one or two years, that will change what you do even further? Well, absolutely. We certainly do. I mean, we see that there's new statistical models coming out, new methodologies, Bob. Like, so for example, you know, if you're leasing to a uh, a small town manufacturer and that small town manufacturer doesn't have a big credit record, let's say, but you still have to come up with some assessment quickly to get the deal done. Um, we can actually use new types of statistical capabilities like, like uh, credibility methods to uh, look at data like that business and use that comparable data to actually figure out what the, the credit risk of that small town manufacturer would be. So there's new statistical methods that come on board. Um, AI, I think, Bob, is one of those things that's really hot right now, but we have to be somewhat careful with it because you know, um, I think a computer still has a hard time telling the difference between um, a cat and a lion in some cases, you know? So you can't just completely, you know, uh, automate everything and AI I think still needs some more work but that's coming along and we'll we're, we do use some versions of AI and some of the statistical methods to uh, uh, constantly true up the models and make sure they're accurate. Mm -hmm.